Rate is an Ontario MP and one of the more politically experienced runners in this leadership race, having held the transport, labour and natural resources portfolios under the Harper government. She joins me now in studio for the latest in our series of one-on-one -on -one conversations with all of the candidates. Good morning, Lisa. Thank you for coming in today. My pleasure, Natasha. Thank you. So let's begin by talking about your positioning in the race, because there's a lot of you running to become the leadership, uh, to become the leader of the party, and you're somewhere in the middle at mm. this point, and we've got eight weeks to go. Yeah. How do you plan on moving ahead and garnering the support of the rest of the party? What's important to remember is that it's a ranked preferential ballot, meaning that the first choice, if you don't get to 50% plus one on the first ballot, then everybody's in the game because the bottom ones drop off, their second choices or their third choices end up going to other candidates. So my game plan is to continue to do what I'm doing, talking to the membership, and when we get the new membership list, talking to the new members that we've welcomed into the party, and you know, highlighting my experience, my leadership capabilities, and the fact that I'm a, I'm a mom from outside the GTA and grew up on the Atlantic coast, but have six and a half solid years of experience in a cabinet and as well I was I'm the only one that was a president and a CEO of anything so I think experience plus leadership plus exactly who I am helps me in terms of um, being leader of this party. Now you've described yourself as a moderate conservative but you've also addressed the issue of irresponsible populism and how mm. that's creeping into this leadership race. Certainly, uh, you've addressed this clearly with Kevin O'Leary, in fact, participating in launching a website called StopKevinO'Leary.com. I did. And saying that he's been insulting Canadian veterans, that you're critical of his economic platform, but you've also uh, taken a shot at Kelly Leach and her concerns around Canadian values and immigration. Mm -hmm. And... I wonder, based on what we've seen happen in American politics, that perhaps conservatives in Canada want a populist candidate. Maybe they don't want the kind of moderate conservatism that you present. So I look at myself as an Ontario conservative, um, very fiscally minded and wanting to make sure that the government works well for people. I like a smaller government because I'm from Cape Breton Island. But most importantly, I want to win in 2019. And I've been through three general elections. I've won in all of them. The last one was really tough. And when we went door to door, we heard lots of Canadians who viewed us as the right party in terms of fiscal responsibility and managing the economy, but didn't like us. So I want to make sure that we have a leader that I can go door to door with, hopefully myself. And that will help us get into the hearts and minds and the trust of Canadians again to bring us back to our policies and platforms, which I do believe Canadians like in terms of fiscal management and making sure that we're growing jobs as opposed to this current group of uh, government folks that are not bringing us in that direction. Well, let's dig deeper into that. So part of your po policy and platforms, especially around the fiscal area, economics, is that you would like to run a on lower taxes, yeah. you want less government, and you want to balance the budget. Yes. But this seems to be in direct opposition to our current Liberal government and our Prime Minister who by all polling accounts, indicates people like him, they're okay with the way this government is moving forward. So yeah. w describe why you think sure. your position would work. So I know for a fact the world changed on Wednesday when this Liberal government decided to get rid of the public transit tax credit. And if you live in the GTA or outside the GTA, that's a big hit. I mean, people make choices on where to work and where to live based upon how much income they're going to have. And relying upon that tax credit that's been in place for 10 years and is about $350 a year for people in Milton, that's a big thing to take. That's for one individual. You know, the Liberals brag about their big middle class tax cut that they gave last year. It wasn't revenue neutral, cost over a billion dollars, and it gave back to individuals about $380. The tax credit that they just got rid of wiped it out. So people are already seeing the fact that they talk a good game, they don't deliver, and they actually don't understand what it's like to try to make end meet in different parts of the country. So I think they're open for a lot of criticism, and we should be positioned to win in 2019 as a result. I like a smaller government. I sat on a committee for Prime Minister Harper at the time in order to review 67 organizations in the government to make sure that we could save money going forward. We were successful. And it was implemented in budget 2012, actually. 
Now, this Liberal government, they make a big splash. Well, we're going to take a look at three federal departments. We did 67 organizations of the federal government in one year. If they truly wanted to make ends meet, if they wanted to get at a deficit, they know the way to go. They just lack the willingness to do so. They're comfortable with giant deficits. And I'm not, because that's a burden on my kids. Well, let's talk about health care then, because you've clearly right. made that a key part of your platform, and that requires taxation, and that requires uh, increased funding. And you've talked about the specific areas you, wanted, mm -hmm. uh, you want to focus in on, and it was mental health and autism. Yeah. And I wonder if you can explain where you stand on this, but also from your own personal experiences, why this is so important to you. You know, everything that I'm putting in my platform and everything that I talk about, including the memberships that I'm very concerned about in terms of not being appropriate memberships that have been struck off the list for the current leadership race, um, all of this is coming to me from members and my experience in talking to our grassroots. And there are some areas within our healthcare system where we have significant gaps that affect real families out there, and there's a lot of pain involved. One of them has to do with families with autism. Um, and we want to make sure that doctors have training so that they can diagnose it early and that parents have that tax help in terms of ensuring that they can make certain expense claims that other folks can. Second is dementia. My husband has early onset Alzheimer's and I've become very much aware of the community and the dangers of dementia coming down the road to us as a society. The Senate has done great work on this. We should implement their, their report and give it funding. The third has to do with rare diseases, something that we don't talk a lot about in the country, but again, huge impact on real Canadian families. That is coming at us pretty quick and, and we need help in there. And the fourth is innovation. And if one of those aspects is working on pharmacare for the country, I think we really have an opportunity to save a significant amount of money that we can deploy in other parts of the healthcare system. So I'm cognizant of the gaps. I want to help fill them, but it all comes from grassroots members telling me what they hear and what they want to see. Okay. We only have time for one quick question at sure. this point. So I just wonder if you could position yourself again, not only as a potential candidate for the Conservative Party, but for the Conservative Party versus the Liberals. I have great policy ideas, but I'm going to rely upon the grassroots. But one thing conservatives need to know out there is that I'm very tough and that I don't stand for impropriety. And the example of that is what I'm hearing right now on the ground about the how upset people are about the fact that there may be um, wrong memberships within our system. 1,351 memberships were struck off. That's $20,000 coming in. We don't know where it's from. And they want to know who are the ones responsible. They want to know who were at the other ends of the computer. I have people in Windsor telling me exactly how I go about putting together a motion to the court in order to get the names of those people at the ends of the computers. They really care about this. I care about this. And I won't stand for that in our party, either on the leadership level or on local nominations. We can't turn our back on this tinkering that's happening in our system because fair players want to play fair and they deserve the right to be able to run for nominations or leaders without having these bad apples messing our system up. Okay, Ms. Raitt, I want to thank you so much for coming in today and wish you the best of luck in you, your campaign. Lisa Raitt is one of 14 candidates vying to become the next federal conservative leader. Ahead of May's convention, we hope to speak with others in the race about their aspirations and vision.